down the hill into Stuart Crossing just before the bridge on our right turn. We come across a mama bear and her cub. The little cub was so inquisitive. I couldn't quite get the video audible enough to listen to the cub talk to mom. We just come across this mama and her cub. Good morning, everybody. We have just come back into Stuart Crossing. We are uh, heading south back to Whitehorse today. I sad. Yeah, we're both feeling a little bit. We know it's our homeward journey. Even though we've got, you know, a week left of travels. But uh, yeah, it's a one way in and one way out trip. So back to Whitehorse today. down the hill into the lookout that we stopped on the way up to Pella Crossing. We get to see the bridge from height as we go down. I think it's about time that we introduced you to Jeff, a very good friend of the channel and to us. He was the savior of our 2019 trip when we broke down in Whitehorse. He was amazing and it helped us get the parts that we needed and fix Oasis in his driveway of all places as you've seen in the past. In the last weekend of our travels we managed to go out for dinner with Jeff to the Klondike Rib and Salmon House. It was an amazing night, talking trailers and life, and finding out more about the history of Whitehorse and the Yukon. Thanks, Jeff, for everything you've done. We're going to enjoy looking at your trailer very shortly. Well, that was a very interesting afternoon um, in Whitehorse. I had a nosebleed yesterday morning after blowing my nose. It seemed to stop after a few minutes. I've never had a nosebleed in my life. And this morning, again, blowing my nose first thing in the morning, I had another nose bleed, which lasted about five or so minutes. And then at three o'clock this afternoon, I blew my nose again and it did not stop. Sandra was on Save On Foods shopping. And from there, she came back out, still running. So that's about 15, 20 minutes. So I got her to drive me to the Whitehorse General Hospital, of which, um, it slowed down. I did have to put a nose plug on. Um, having never had a nosebleed, it took a little bit to remember what to do. You know, not too far back, pinch the bridge of your nose, etc. Uh, finally, it stopped yesterday and this morning, but this afternoon it did not stop whatsoever. Um, we just kept pouring to the point that I was swallowing blood like it was no tomorrow. And then they gave me these like tube bags, which are quite interesting. And 
I went through three of them. I wouldn't say I filled them, but there was definitely a lot of stuff going in there and congealed blood as well because I got a gag reflex and I guess it was gelling and I was throwing it back up. Um, I did manage to get into the ER. Um, I've since been discharged and nothing is wrong with me medically. Uh, it could well be an altitude thing. Uh, we have been here before, never had a problem. Uh, we've been here since Saturday. We've slept, as you've seen, on top of the World Highway. Uh, but they said it can take a little bit of time. So dry conditions, dusty conditions, and the altitude could all be a factor, but there was nothing uh, in the way of a clue to say if there was anything wrong with me. Uh, I am doing well better now. Uh, I do have the hospital bracelet on me, um, and I have been discharged. It is now 8.15 p.m. I did get admitted, or well, we came to the hospital around 4 p.m., so four and a half hours. But yeah, kind of an interesting afternoon and I hope not to come back, that is for sure. I want to say a big thank you to the uh, Whitehorse General Hospital Road for seeing me, an out-of-towner. And uh, I'm hoping that I even get better, so we'll see what happens. We will monitor this for the next uh, couple of days for sure. The next day I took Sandra up to Jeff's place and have a look at his trailer. She had not seen it at this point. I was fortunate when I was helping Jeff at the beginning of our holiday remove some of his vehicles, I was able to see this trailer and I was in shock and awe at that point. Sandra was still in shock and awe when she got to open up the doors, open up the awning and play around inside to see what this was going to offer in the future. Jeff, you've made an amazing trailer and we are so jealous. All aluminum siding, all the fit and the finishes that you've ordered or have put in place already make this trailer a dream that's come true. You have really thought about all the detail that needs to go into such a trailer as this. As we said, we are very jealous of this. You can see here that this area would be for the kitchen. The electronics are going in, the insulation going into the walls, the insulation going into the floors, and then the siding on the inside of the trailer been finished. Some of these electronics were starting to be put into the right place. These photographs were taken later after we'd come home. Jeff, we really loved our conversations at night and what you asked. All those questions with regards to what we would do better or what we would not do in the future if we were to do a trailer like this. We salute you, Jeff, for all of your hard work in that trailer and we do, really do, treat you as a good friend we are looking forward to when you come back down to vancouver and we can give you the same hospitality as you have given us in whitehorse choosing an appropriate colored drink for my nosebleeds in whitehorse jeff cheers to you from the woodcutters blanket brewery downtown whitehorse good morning everybody good morning it's a late but early start for us it's a sad day. We left Watson Lake. Finally, we should no. say. Well, finally in a way that we are a day delayed. What uh, course? What did I say? Watson Lake. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We finally left. White horse. <laughs> and it's a sad day. But we are leaving it early but late. It's uh, 10 to 10 on a Monday morning. We sort of should have left yesterday but we've uh, my nose bleed. We, we, had wanted, a, we a, wanted to stay behind a little bit more. We um, had a medical emergency. Unfortunately Andy had to be in the hospital for several hours and um, they would have loved us to stay for three days but we can't make it home in three days. So uh, we, we hung around on Sunday, chilled out for another day, just to make sure everything was good. Which is nice, we got to see a few small things, taste a few breweries. But now we're heading down to Watson Lake, and then we want to fix our sign, because it was peeling a bit. And then we're going to move on to Liard Hot Springs. So, so thank you, White Horse has been great. 
Yeah. And finally meeting up with Jeff. Again. Again. Um, he helped us out when we were up here in 19 when Oasis uh, was separating from the chassis. And uh, we got to hang out uh, most nights around the campfire, which is great because we got to hear about his trailer build. And uh, we were feeding off of him and he was feeding off of us. He gave us about actually some good little tips here and there to make more usable space in for me anyways in the galley. Yep. And it's like simple little things we didn't even think of. The question was, do we ever reevaluate? And we do reevaluate everything consistently, but not so much on the huge items, but more on the miniature little stuff. So. some of these lumps out of my nose, gently. So Andy is still wearing his beautiful white bracelet. Um, he doesn't like wearing jewelry at all, but this one we're going to hold on to. Um, Until this, after Watson Lake. Yeah, because Watson Lake does have a medical facility and they can actually access his records from White Horse, what happened, so we don't have to go through it all again. So we're just being precautious and um, Until we, leave, until we leave the Yukon and then, uh, or leave Watson Lake and then uh, head into the yard. Uh, doctors have okayed me to do the hot springs of the yard, so I'm okay we'll with just, that. We'll so, just be cautious. Yeah. But it's definitely different. Never had a nosebleed like that before. And, uh, and I've been around cadets that have had nosebleeds and I've never seen them last that long either. So I know from some of my training that normally nosebleeds are brought on from dry conditions, lack of water, or hydration, uh, stuff like that. But I've never ever had a problem with nosebleeds, ever. So this was a bit of a shock. But we're over it. No point harping on about it, we got going. Medical facilities in Whitehorse were amazing. Whitehorse has been amazing. Like, there's so many little things to do in Whitehorse that even though we had an extra day, we didn't know what to do. We sort of went around and picked up a few things, groceries, and shopping and stuff, and, and gifts and souvenirs. But we found little nick nooks and crannies and got to do some little breweries, like I said, which we don't normally get to do. We didn't bring you along, we just sort of wanted a couple of days of relaxation. Uh, when we headed from Dawson City, there was not much to see uh, either. You, you've all seen that footage already, what we did take. And one thing when you are traveling, like White Horse, Dawson, uh, when they say the store closes at 5, they are ready to flip that sign. Everyone's out. A lot of stores up in Dawson and White Horse were not even open. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it, it has hit not just the large cities and larger communities it's really hit hard the smaller um, independent local communities so a lot of stores we went into on our last trip up here in Dawson were all open there was maybe 50% that weren't closed unfortunately um, equipment update Oasis is doing really well touch wood touch my block of wood in my head there uh, the roof racks are holding up really well. Um, basically, the biggest issue we've had is dust. Um, with this tarno cover, because before we had the uh, canopy on the back, I'm not sure where it's coming in. Uh, I'm guessing it's coming in from the bottom of the tailgate, because I have not sealed the, the tailgate. And it's that fine, fine talcum powder, talcum powder sand. It gets everywhere. But it's easy to remove, so... Yeah. Brush. Um, everything on the trailer has been working super well. Um, after we drank all of the tank water and started replacing it with out of home water, um, we have switched to bottles. Um, we do recycle all the bottles, they don't get put in a garbage can. We take them to the local town recycling. A for recyclability, and B, it gives us an extra three, four, five dollars that goes back into the fuel tank paid for the deposit uh, so we get rid of it and it's kind of different up north even from Prince George up I noticed you don't have to really do it yourself 
was we're so used to putting cans and beer cans and pop cans and pop bottles into different areas. They sift through it all themselves and you get, you get the deposit back and that goes back into our fuel tanks. So one thing that we do uh, do uh, well, so it's a bit of a mess in the back. Clothes, primarily sweaters. It's cooled down. We're at 11 degrees. The last three days it's really dropped in temperature. Uh, last night was pretty chilly. Uh, but, you know, what can I say? It's, we're geared for everything. Uh, rations are, are slowly being used up. We still have, I think, four days of meat frozen. And these are all good questions, like Jeff was asking us. He's like, how long do you go with food? Do you stick with your food menu plan? And yes, we do. And for some reason, we seem to be doing pretty good. We stayed sort of more around the biggest cities and towns. So Tim Hortons tea uh, has helped out. We always make tea in the morning for a cup before we go out. Um, but it's easy to grab a snack at White Horse. Not so much in Dawson, unless you want to buy gourmet. Fancy coffees and fancy teas and things. Yeah, bistro, bistro style. So, which is okay. I mean, we're putting back into the local community. And it's nice to speak to the locals. But other than that, uh, I'm just trying to look around. I think everything's good. Uh, batteries are doing okay. We did have a problem yesterday. I don't know what happened. A uh, battery that's behind my seat was completely flat. So we had to bring that back to life. Um, the four and a half amp charger wasn't going to cut it I did bring a slightly bigger charger with me and once the little four and a half amp um, CTEC battery charger behind me put it up to 12 volts uh, the batteries switched over and I could consume a bit more power from my bigger battery charger and within a couple of hours they were back up so this truck creating energy while we uh, idle at the campground and then uh, go into town while we do that drive the batteries right back up to power again so just a little glitch who knows what yeah not sure why um but everything is running 100 percent and we were without when we the fridge died it, uh, by the time i realized we were minus two on the fridge and the freezer uh, and it's normally set at minus 12 so nothing thawed out everything was cold inside and it's back to working normal so power in this truck power in with what we've been doing without the dc dc uh, c tech system um, has blown my mind it's been really really good so just some updates on what we've been doing uh, we're probably not going to show you too much unless we find some really scenic views and stuff today we're heading back down to watson like i said we've already done that uh, watson lake drive And then when we do get back home, I'm sure we'll do some recaps on different things, whether it be the truck separately with all um, this gadgets and gadgets and things that this truck offers. Um, and then food updates, what to do, what not to do, just different little tidbits because everyone travels different. Um, everyone cooks different. So there's a lot of different things to go over um, when you're traveling with a dog different things like that so uh, yeah we can do that when we get home yep we'll keep you in touch with what we've done uh, again once we get into uh, Liard we'll do reviews there again we're going to do an update on Watson Lake as well because we're going to fix the, the, the banner that we put up on our sticker Hopefully it lasts a few more years. What's that? Three years it's lasted so far. That means we might have to come back up to check on it in three more years. And that's what Jeff has said. He's invited us back and uh, he wants to go and do some local trails and camp sites that are off the beaten track. And we are looking forward to doing something with him in the future, whether it's up here in the Yukon or as he's going to travel down to BC, uh, hang out with him down there. We just realized that we're coming up to Johnson's Crossing again and we're going to go get some sausage rolls, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we just recognized the bridge. So. I believe it's just after the bit, it's right here. Yeah.
back here again at Johnson's Crossing. Well, there's a cutie patootie. If you want to buy a fifth wheel, there's a little one right there. <laughs> little, it looks like a bunk model. Four grand. Oh, there you could have saved some money. Continue on Alaska Highway. If I can, do you want me to stop? Uh, why not? Hmm? If you can. Continue on Alaska you Highway. You don't have to. Bridge. You drove it coming out, right? Yeah, you did. That's okay, I'm good. Yes, I did. You drove this bridge twice. <laughs> woo! -hoo! Woo! I did it! Whoa, whoa! Woo! -hoo! I did it twice. Bella's all excited. <laughs> Sorry, we couldn't actually show you the repair to the sign. 
<laughs> I had Sandra on my shoulders reaching up because she was too I'm too short and she's too short but oh teamwork fixed the problem so what we've done is glue the sign back and we've put the clamps on there and from there hopefully it'll dry while we have lunch and uh, go and have a wander around here and then we'll pull the clamps off and hopefully it'll be good for however long and hopefully we can get up here again at some point have no clue when uh, to check out our sign yet again excellent actually while I'm on here let's just do a quick video because we've got oasis here as well I'm not sure if this will work but we've got oasis and we've got the sign in there as well pretty cool so all repaired now she's not flapping in the wind it's gonna last a little bit longer super happy about that now to go get gas and head down to Liard Hot Springs and hopefully a nice dip in the water tonight. So we have just arrived at Lucky Lake. We're going to show you what this lake looks like. It's more of a pond or a quarry pond. It has a water slide too. But the other portion of this is the fact that if we turn around, we are actually leaving the, the Yukon. Yukon. We're going to go back into no man's land for a little period of time and then into British Columbia. Now, I believe that the uh, Alaska Highway sort of zigs in and out of BC and the Yukon for the next few uh, miles. Um, but yeah, we're about to leave the Yukon. Going Thank to go you, back into, Yukon. Exactly. And we're going to go and explore again Lucky Lake. Sandra? Yes. Are you feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> so this is the entrance to Lucky Lake. We have been here before. It's a really nice area. If you're driving into the Yukon it's from the Alaska Highway, um, it's a must stop off if it's a sunny day. And I'm not sure if you can see it over there. They have a water slide that goes down into the lake and this is the lake it's a beautiful place like I said and uh, let's cross this ravine <laughs> Bella's, <laughs> Bella's off to the water she's looking forward to going in there Yeah, there's the uh, we've never seen the slide actually open maybe a weekend thing but it goes right down into that area right down there and there she is splashing around be a quick 360 the sun is out it is sand 